So welcome to Technodad Life, where we build, learn, and create as a community. And on today's episode, we're going to be using Handbrake to convert our movies for Plex. And how we're going to be doing that is using the Handbrake Docker. And we're going to be using the Portainer GUI for Docker. And that's how we're going to install everything. And it's pretty simple to do. There's just a few little minor things that we have to be aware of. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you like, and if you haven't already subscribed, and here we go now. And a special thanks to all my patrons who, without your support, this channel would not be possible. And if you haven't already, please think about becoming a patron and supporting the channel you love. Thank you. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go to Open Vival Extras, Open Portainer, and then log in if you have to. Click Local, click on the left on Containers, and so what we're going to do is add a container, and so the container what we're going to add is Handbrake. And so we're going to go to Docker Hub, and so we're going to find this j slushage handbrake and all you have to do is google j slushage handbrake docker and this will come up you can just copy the title there put that there in uh, portainer and there it came up with the name already so we want latest next we have to publish a port on this one because it doesn't do it automatically and so to access the web GUI you need to open up port 5800 and let's see there it is right there and so in portainer what we're going to do is puts 5800 and 5800 uh, some containers it does do this automatically but this one it does not so next we're going to click on volumes and and so we're going to move these side by side if it looks a little funny but uh, basically we're under volumes we're going to clip map additional volumes and so the first one we're going to do is configure you can copy that paste that right there then click bind and then we have to put in the host path and so for the configure is if you notice over here this is the app data so if we look at our folders in our open mean belt, we have the app data, downloads, and media. App data is where the Docker information goes. Downloads is where we're going to uh, have our downloads, and that's where we're going to look for things to convert. And then media, we have our movies, music, and TV. So now how do you find the path to that uh, particular folder and so we go back to open mini vaults go down to shared folders and we're going to expand this for a second and click on the down arrow next to relative path columns and then put the absolute path and now you can see that it has the absolute path there so we're going to copy this down serve slash dev dash disk dash by label dash label dash data disk and data disk will be whatever you labeled your device so here you can see data disk and then for uh, app data it's slash app data slash and so we go down here okay so we put in our app data and then we're going to name this so we're going to actually make a folder in that uh, app data folder and we're just going to call it handbrake and then put the slash and so there's our first folder and then click map additional volumes so the next one is storage and so we'll paste that there and we don't actually need this so all we're going to do is put it in the same spot so then we know where it goes. Next we'll do a map additional volume. And so this one is watch. 
and paste that there. We can copy this first half here. Oh, and we have to make this bind, and then we can paste. And then this will be downloads. And if we look in our downloads folder, what we're going to call this is our watch folder. So just type in watch, watch and slash. And then we need an output folder. And so here we can just copy the outputs. Paste that here. Make sure it's set to bind. Copy our path from above. And then this is going into our media folder. And so we're going to be converting movies. So we're going to put that in the movies folder and then put slash. And that is it for volumes. And if we look over here on the right, we see actually there's nothing else to do for this. Network, we don't have to change. There's no environmental variables. Nothing to do there. The, we can uh, change this to restart policy to unless stopped. And don't have to do any, well, run times. We can restrict the amount of memory and CPU usage if we want. So say we want to just do partial or unlimited. We have that ability here also with memory. And then finally, nothing to do under capabilities. So we go back up to uh, deploy container and we click deploy container and then that will download. Uh, it will take longer than that and then it will start running. Uh, I already have it download. And if we go over here, you can see our published port is 5800. And so now what we're going to do is copy our IP address. Paste that here and then put colon 5800 and then hit enter. And then that brings us into handbrake. For us, what we're going to be doing is sticking folder or videos into our watch folder. So then they come out into our movies folder here. Uh, but what we can do before we do that, before we do our first one, is actually get some presets. Okay. So if you notice right here, there is a preset option. So if we click on that, you can see it will give us some general presets which are actually good for most people. And so the one that it set at is fast 1080p 30, uh, but you can adjust it to other things if you'd like. Uh, it will automatically just use the title of whatever the video is called in the first place. If we want to make a preset, what we can do is just sort of go through these and change things. So set to MPEG-4, dimensions are already filled out, filters, video. So now you can do this one. So for Raspberry Pi 3B and below H.264, the Raspberry Pi 4 can do H.265. So you might think about that uh, if you want. Uh, for most compatibility for most devices right now, H.264 works the best, but H.265 is smaller. You can change uh, your frame rates. You can select audio tracks. You can burn in subtitles, uh, do chapters and tags. Then once you're done with that, you can set save as and then set as default. And then that will make your default handbrake for your video conversions. Let's find a video. Let's stick it in the handbrake watch folder. And let's see what happens. 
Okay, so now I have our open media vault opened, the folders in there, and then we have two videos. And so we're gonna go to the downloads. There's our watch folder, we'll open that up. And then we're gonna drag a video in there to be converted. So there it's copying over. And then you can see now it's starting, it took a few seconds, it's starting the encoding the Plex, okay? So if you don't have the web GUI open, you can actually go to Portainer, right here where this little piece of paper is. You can just click on that. And then if we scroll down, you can see it has what's going on in the container there, the logs of the container. And here you can see it's starting to encode the video that I just put in there and it gives a running total of how much time it is to be completed. And so here it says 2.23% done and so it's a little behind here. Here it says 2.5. Uh, but they give the roughly actually the same amount of time if the percentage is off a little bit on each one. So that's it for today. That's how to easily convert videos for your Plex or for other devices to use. Uh, very simple and very easy to use. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.